Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Phil. Welcome to Phil's Computer Lab. Now previously, we built an interactive retro gaming PC where you guys could vote what kind of computer I should put together. And in the last few videos, we basically uh, looked at some of the uh, comments that you gave me and I did videos on the GPU and the operating systems and so on. Now, a ton of you wanted me to check out Windows 2000 and I've actually never used it before. So Windows 2000 is built on NT technology and came out before Windows XP. Now uh, you can download it from the WinWorld uh, website uh, with all the service packs. So that's where I got my copies from. Now this video took me a lot longer to produce because I ran into quite some issues. Now I just want to stress that um, this is not a negative uh, reflection of Windows 2000. Uh, I know it's really good. I've tried it on a few other machines in the meantime because I just wanted to see what actually was going on. So this is really, well, sometimes things don't work well and this video is basically what this is about. So um, it's not to diminish uh, Windows 2000. It's basically a story of what happened with this computer. Sometimes certain hardware and software configurations and drivers just don't want to play ball. So in this video, I will, uh, I will talk about the issues uh, first, then we're going to have a look at some uh, benchmarks comparing the performance with Windows 98 SE and also Windows Millennium, and then a conclusion and a bit of chat at the end. The machine I used for this video has a Socket A motherboard with an Bio KT600 chipset. We've got an Athlon 1 GHz CPU, 2 gigs of DDR memory, a PowerVR Cairo 2 GPU, a Promise SATA controller, a 120 gig SSD, and a Sound Blaster Audio G2 ZS. The BIOS settings were just like the ones for Windows 98 and for Millennium. However, because I'm using more memory, I had to press Ctrl F1 to activate the hidden BIOS options. I had a look in the memory timings and one of the settings was three instead of two. So I changed that back to two so that the memory timings are identical to the previous benchmarks. When installing Windows 2000, what stood out is that the installation screens at the beginning of the setup procedure are pretty much identical to Windows XP. So you can definitely see the DNA shining through and how it continued on towards Windows XP. Unlike in Windows 98 or Millennium, you can't install Windows in IDE mode if you have a SATA controller. So you need to press F6 at the startup and have a storage driver on a floppy disk. Now, that wasn't a problem at all. However, I ran into some data corruption issues for whatever reason uh, the installation would go through but at some point I would get a blue screen and an error message and eventually I tracked it down to the SATA controller. It seems that the promised SATA 150 controller, the Windows 2000 drivers or maybe the drivers I had although those are the latest ones, they just didn't want to play ball. Uh, I ran the installation disk under a virtual machine just to make sure that the media is okay but that was fine. So. But then I realized, well, this is Windows 2000. I could actually use more modern SATA controllers. And yes, I could. So I swapped the controller for a Promise SATA 300 controller and that one worked fine. I could install Windows without any issues. Comparing to Windows XP, I noticed that you can't quick format the hard drive. So that just means if you've got a spacious ID drive, like a 120 gig hard drive, that the formatting procedure will take quite a long time pretty much the same uh, as under Windows 98 or Millennium. All the drivers I've used are also identical to the ones I used under Windows 98 and Millennium. So all the via driver packages, they're all universal. They go from 98 to Windows XP. The only driver that was different was for the GPU. For whatever reason, the Power VR Cairo 2 uh, video drivers, they are unique. They've got a package for uh, 98 and Millennium. They've got a package for 2000 and they've got a package for XP. Now, initially I used the ISO. With the Windows 2000 vanilla version, I tried to install the USB 2 driver and it told me I needed Service Pack 4. So I started again and using the Service Pack 4 ISO. Now I found that really interesting because 98 and Millennium, they don't care. You can install USB 2 with the vanilla uh, version. You don't need any Service Pack. So I'm not quite sure why that requirement is. And I believe Windows XP has a similar requirement, but it's only Service Pack 1 as far as I know. In terms of Windows tweaks, all I did was set the power profile to be always on. And I also went into the PowerVR driver and disabled VSync. 
So one issue I ran into had to do with the wireless keyboard and mouse. I use a Microsoft basic uh, wireless keyboard and mouse set and it's got a little USB dongle and after every reboot the mouse wasn't working and you can go into device manager and uh, it shows up as not working. You remove the device and scan it again and then it works. The other option is just removing the dongle. Um, weird issue, never had an issue with this keyboard. So uh, it's just one of those things that certain pieces of hardware just don't play ball. The next issue I ran into was software. 3 d Mark 99 Max wouldn't launch. There's an error about the wrong DirectX version. Uh, apparently that's a common thing on the internet. There is probably a workaround, but I ran out of time and I just had to move on. Now I ran into a big issue with OpenGL games. For some reason the Power VR card just wouldn't play ball. I couldn't get GL Quake running, I couldn't get Quake 2 running, Quake 3 or Serious Sam. So for some reason it ran it in software mode and I've got some screenshots here with the error messages to, to give you an idea. Now uh, I was sure that this has nothing to do with Windows 2000 so I swapped the GPU for a uh, GeForce 2 and here everything worked fine. So uh, must be something to do with the drivers or something went wrong with the installation but uh, at this point I've uh, reinstalled Windows so many times that I've actually wasted quite a bit of time. I just had to move on and unfortunately I could couldn't complete any OpenGL benchmarks. Initially also Quake 2 wouldn't even launch. Now luckily I quickly found a solution on one of the GOG forums. One of the DLL files needs to be renamed and I believe the same issue happens under Windows XP as well. I also tried some GOG installers because Windows 2000 is closer to XP and they will actually run just fine. However I noticed that some of the programs don't show the user interfaces so some of the buttons are missing but at least you can install the GOG games so that's good news that means you can install a lot more games than under 98 or Millennium. Now on the positive side once Windows 2000 was up and running I had no issues. You also don't need to activate it which is fantastic that's always a big pain with Windows XP. It's got a fairly modern look uh, the USB support works out of the box and Everything looks very robust and uh, solid, so that's the impression I got away from it. So let's have a look at some benchmarks. So first up we've got 3 d Mark 2000. You can see all the operating systems here on the screen. So Windows 2000 is a little bit behind the other operating systems, but it's really not much at all. In incoming there's basically no difference. All three operating systems clock in at around 109 FPS. In expandable we can see that Windows 98 SE is a little bit faster, 108 FPS compared to 106. Now this is measurable, can you notice it in a game? I doubt it. And we've got Draken, here also Windows 2000 a little bit behind, 79, 80 FPS compared to 81, 82. But once again it's not going to make a difference when you're actually playing games. So in terms of gaming performance, Windows 2000 might be a hunch behind 98 and Millennium but it's not going to be a case of getting a huge FPS boost one way or the other. So all in all I ran into a ton of issues. Now I didn't stop there with trying Windows 2000. I tried it on another system, an Athlon 64 and there everything went flawless. I had no issues with the mouse and everything just worked. And also with the storage controller I now knew what to use and uh, that also sorted out everything. However the power VR card continued to give me uh, grief on the Athlon 64. It just wouldn't work as soon as I installed the chipset driver it would just hard lock and I couldn't boot up. However Windows 2000 just like XP has a, an option uh, when you press F8 you get uh, a couple of recovery options safe, safe mode and, and so on and there's one option uh, it's called something the previous known configuration and that saved my butt a few times. Yeah, So that's a very cool recovery feature that 98 and Millennium don't have if those operating systems die on you, uh, you're out of luck. Uh, you might have to reimage your machine or start from scratch. Interesting with the USB 2 needing service pack 4. Well now I know I'm just gonna go with service pack 4 and not bother with the other additions. It's not a big deal. The OpenGL issues are really strange that I saw with the Power VR, but because I swapped the GeForce and everything worked with that, it could be a driver issue or something else went wrong with my installation, I'm not sure. So there you have it guys, this video took me a lot longer to produce, but it's also interesting because 
that's what retro uh, PC computing is all about. And uh, I, I hear stories all the time when uh, you build a machine that I built on the channel and you run into a lot more issues than I have. And that's just how it is. Sometimes certain combinations of hardware, drivers and so on can cause issues. It could be something as simple as uh, a wonky RAM stick or even your ID ribbon cables having having uh, a little glitch in the in the wiring you know i've seen it all so i wouldn't stress too much i'm confident on windows 2000 is really good and on the athlon 64 it's uh, it worked flawless so i will definitely revisit uh, that topic at a later stage um, looking at things like service pack performance but for the time being and going forward i will do one more video uh, with the one gigahertz retro gamer about windows xp and after that, I think that's it. I'm kind of a little bit over it and I want to move on to uh, other issues. Going back to the slot one projects, uh, I've got a couple of CPUs lined up and a few other projects that I need to complete. So that's it, guys. Thank you for watching and supporting me and I'll see you soon with another video.